During the late 2010s, X and Ski were on their way to becoming one of the most iconic duos of the SoundCloud era. However, as always, with fame comes jealousy, which caused Ski to be afraid of staying in X's shadow and becoming his sidekick, which tore the two apart. The two went from diehard brothers to getting into beef, not making music and never seeing each other. So why did Ski and X fall out? And were they at least on good terms before X's passing? The duo would first meet after they were both sent to the same juvenile detention around 2013, where X was in for armed robbery, armed burglary, possession, armed burglary, of, a firearm, possession of a firearm, um, armed burglary with dwelling, resisting without violence, grand theft of three yeah, charges. Yeah, he got a lot of charges. Possession of oxycodone. They was trying to direct file his ass. Yeah. Was, I had the, the worst charges in the jail. The While Ski was in there for a much smaller charge, which was having around $10 worth of weed on him. It was during this stay in juvenile detention that the two would start discussing the idea of creating music. Ski would actually spit a freestyle to X for fun, but X actually encouraged Ski to write more and take it seriously. Yeah, we met and then that's how we even figured out we can rap, that like each other can rap. We never rapped before then, like we just was like in there beating on chairs and figured out that we both should take it further. The two would bond a lot during their stay in this juvenile hall, where they took part in fun activities, such as faking headaches for ibuprofen so they can crush it up and snort it, which apparently is actually not great for you. Ski would also turn 16 while in juvenile, and as a birthday gift, X would give him his lunch. Once released in 2013, the two would stay close friends. Ski would be released first from juvenile jail, as he had lesser charges, but later down the line, X would be released as well. X would get transferred to Ski's high school, where the duo would continue their bad behaviour. Whether that was getting into fights after school, getting kicked out, or even planning to partake in a series of home invasions. Yeah, we need an outlet to just stop getting in trouble. All we like to do is hit licks and like do hood rat shit with our friends. But what they both soon realised was this is not a sustainable plan. Ski just got out of juvenile prison on some pretty petty charges. However, was around the age where he would soon be classed as a legal adult, meaning if he was caught again, he would go to actual prison. Then X, well he just got out on some serious charges, and the juvenile hall already wanted to send him up to jail for beating up a homosexual kid. So instead, X bought a Blue Snowball mic with the intention of creating music and trying to make some money out of it, which encouraged Ski to do the same. X recorded my first song, he ordered um the stuff off of eBay, it was like a snowball mic. It was like the cheapest mic you could get. It sat on like three prongs or four prongs, one of those. And it was like just a basic um, audacity and like a laptop. After some time, Ski would start a group called Very Rare, which he brought X into. But X would break off from that group and create his own collective, Members Only, which Ski would eventually join. The duo would release their first collaborative mixtape in the April of 2015, called Members Only Volume 1 where the duo displayed their talents by approaching tracks such as Freddy v Jason with a classic hip-hop approach, to then switching things up and going for a heavier style on tracks like Fuck and Goddamn. The group would then release their second and final mixtape during the October of 2015, Members Volume 2. The second tape would be when X introduced more members to the group, which consisted of local Florida artists and producers such as Fuck It, Flyboy Tarantino, Yaprak Asimov, Kelbender, and 100 Junior. That is just a couple people that featured on the Volume 2 tapes because the group had many members over the years and it is unknown who are official members or just affiliates. Now during this period, X, Ski, and members only were super underground and were only making buzz in their local area within Florida. But after the song Fuck released, from the first members only mixtape is when things would change and people within the underground scene would start noticing X and his group. Even though X was garnering some success from his music, he would unfortunately return to his old, dark, criminal lifestyle as X and three other subjects entered a residence in Broward County, Florida in an attempt to rob the place. X would first attack the homeowner by striking him multiple times in the head with a handgun while his associates would be shouting, where is the money, where is the stuff? The four men would end up taking an iPad, iPhone, a PSP and $20. As soon as the four men left, the victims would call the police and would identify X through his public Twitter account. 
but luckily for X, the police and detectives had to build a case on him and he wouldn't be arrested and charged for these crimes until around a year later. So for now, we can get back to his and Ski's music career. We would just like feed off of each other. We both were the big brother and little brother at the same time to each other. We didn't even know what we wanted to do at the time. We just know we wanted to make a stand for who we are and just be ourselves, say fuck it, like no matter the consequences. At that point, we were like, we don't really want a job. And if we need a job and the job doesn't want us because we have face tats, then that's not the job we would really want for ourselves or some shit. Like, fuck it, this is what we're doing. Now, before the end of 2015, X would release the song Look At Me, which of course, many people will know, is the song that pretty much blew X up. However, it wouldn't be until a couple months after until it actually took off and started gaining attention. Now, as X was making some noise for himself, so was Ski after he released his first mixtape, Drowning Designer, which included the song Take a Step Back and Rip Roach, featuring XXX Tentacion, which got pretty popular within the underground back during that time, and to this day is Ski's third most popular song on Spotify. However, on the 9th of August in 2016, X would be arrested on home invasion and battery charges that he committed nearly a year ago. Now as X was in jail, his music would really start taking off, which is when fans would want to get to know more about him and hear more music from him. While as X was in jail, he obviously couldn't release music or say anything. So fans looked for the person closest to him. And when you looked at X's discography, the name Ski Master Slump God would frequently show up on popular songs such as I Love It When They Run and Rip Roach. So the clout X was gaining while locked up would also be helping Ski grow and the two would become a renowned duo within the underground. And from past interviews and tweets, you could really see how close the two were. But as I stated previously, fans only wanted to know about X, which is when Ski would start showing signs of being irritated by people constantly harassing him about updates on X. As Ski wanted to be his own artist, but to him, it felt like he was blowing up from being the guy that makes music with X, not as an individual artist. No, nah, but what about your man? Yeah. Yes, who, who was locked coming? up? I heard, I heard he might be Oh, out. X? No, y'all never keep telling me you free X. How about y'all free no, X? No, y'all free no, X. No, 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 How about you fucking free X, bitch? How about you free X? You keep telling me to free X. How about y'all free X? All I see is free X on my shit, Shortly after his arrest in August, he would be given a bond of $10,000, which would be posted on the 14th of September where he would also have to agree to house arrest. Sorry to interrupt the video, but if you guys are enjoying so far, I'd appreciate if you could subscribe. I'm trying to get to 20K ASAP. Also like and comment. Thank you. Let's get back into the video. However, just a month later, X would be arrested and charged with aggravated battery on a pregnant victim and domestic battery by strangulation, false imprisonment and witness tampering. Now those are some pretty hefty charges. And again, X would be locked up for some time. But as we move into 2017, him being locked up didn't stop his career from exploding. He would start getting managed by Adam22. Rocky would be seen saying free X. Look at me would enter the Billboard Hot 100. And he would even get into beef with the superstar Drake. X would eventually plead no contest to the home invasion charges and be released from jail on probation in March. That meant he was back home. I could work on music. On the 17th of May, he released his debut mixtape Revenge, which peaked at the 44th spot on the Billboard 200. At the end of the month, he would set off on his revenge tour with Ski Mask and his collective members only, tagging along with him. Well, a month before the tour set off, Ski and X would actually get into some beef with the rapper Rob Stone. Ski Mask and Rob Stone would act as openers for Designer's Outlet Tour, and it would get off to a terrible start as on the 9th of April, there would be an altercation on stage. It would begin with Ski Mask being upset that he was not given a mic to perform, while Rob Stone was just starting his set. Even though, Ski purposely turned up late as he didn't want to be the first performing act, as the crowd would be empty, and he felt like he deserved to perform to more people. So when it was Rob Stone's time to perform, he turned up, tried grabbing the mic, however, when that wasn't successful, to show his frustration, Ski just stood in the middle of the stage and threw a temper tantrum, which would lead to him eventually being escorted off stage. Now, after Rob Stone performed, he told Ski backstage, yo, that wasn't cool, don't do that again. 
Now this situation would end up going on social media as a fan would post a video which would lead to a lot of controversy. X would first respond to the situation on Instagram Live, which I can only play portions of due to the threats and language. Oh, bro, I got, bro, look, bro, just listen to this, bro. Bro, listen to this ass ass shit, bro. Bro, listen to this shit. You got niggas whistling on your shit. What the fuck is this shit, son? After the show, a fan would post a video of the situation and said, yo, WTF, Dago wasn't fair with you, bro. F whatever the issue was, slump god. X would see this and rush to defend his brother by responding with, let me know whoever the F that it is getting in the mouth when I go on tour for putting their peasant's hand on my brother. Now this didn't sit well with Rob Stone, so he would get involved and tweet back saying, I'm not Drake fella, don't come around here with this bullshit. X would then respond again with a pretty graphic tweet, which I really can't read out on YouTube. But to summarize, he said he's going to do things to his mouth and put a sharp object in his uh. So after all this internet beef cooled down, the next day, Ski and Rob Stone would be opening again for designers tour. However, things got really bad. Ski would get on stage where a pair of individuals would be seen running up behind him and jumping him. Where they would fall into the crowd, Ski would then get up, run backstage until he was caught again by Rob Stone's boyfriends outside the venue where he would be swarmed again, leaving him laying on the floor with his trousers down. Now Ski and Rob Stone would be both cut from the designer's tour. As usual, X would be the first one to jump in and defend Ski on Instagram. You you and your boyfriends, you, you and all your little boyfriends can't go to no cities. <laughs> that nigga can't tour, that nigga rap career done, you gonna have to go work out Publix, bro. When we done with you, nigga gonna have to go work out Publix, nigga, that shit dead. Hey. Hey, shout out to uh, the Ski Mask, the only nigga I know will go in another nigga's city and perform on his city and have a bunch of blood niggas fucking jump in because he don't want to look pussy. Y'all niggas lost all respect. Shout out to Ski Mask, nigga. Go follow Ski Mask. Ski Mask would also release some tweets saying that Rob Stone had to get 30 people on him to even attempt to hurt him and that the security was even in on it. Rob Stone would then tweet out that he'll beat up both X and Ski and would also respond with a video on his Instagram story. Look, ex, I'ma tell you, little bitch ass nigga. I ain't got time for this game, nigga. You niggas keep talking on the internet. I done told you, boy, I done beat your homeboy up last night in Cali, nigga. And I'll be out rolling loud, little nigga. Don't you dare come to San Diego, boy. Don't yeah, you dare. Look, I don't. I don't make Instagram videos and shit to for for clout or I don't need your fucking clout nigga you got a hype wave nigga my shit platinum nigga you not fucking with me nigga okay I'm gonna tell you one time you not fucking with me blood how I rap them kids B y'all niggas are some little ass kids bro I ain't got time for this shit I'm a grown ass man bro I got a kid I'm trying to get my bands bro and anytime y'all niggas want a problem I'm gonna fuck you niggas up though nigga and now if we go back to X's revenge tour which I mentioned earlier one night on the 7th of June while performing at Rob Stone's hometown LA, someone would run on stage and knock X out. And that person was supposedly one of Rob Stone's affiliates. And to be totally honest, the entire revenge tour was the subject of multiple controversial events. One of X's friends, Wi Fi's funeral, was also attacked and sent to hospital. A fan was supposedly stabbed. And X would also punch a fan after he placed his hands on his chest. But what to me seemed weird is that after the tour finished, well, this is when Ski would start to distance himself from X. Even though X just basically got knocked out because of Ski's beef, because X was trying to defend him throughout the entire situation. But trust me, it gets weirder. X would notice that Ski is furthering himself from him. So he would come out on his Instagram speaking about not being able to trust anyone in the industry and that he can no longer trust people close to him, which had fans very confused. If you're an artist and you're trying to work with anyone in the industry, understand that you cannot trust anyone. People that you trust, people that are your friends, people that are close to you, the people you do business with will always try and fuck you over. Trust no one. Do not trust anyone. Today was a real fucked up day for me because people I trusted with my home, people I trusted with my life had shown me today that they can't be trusted. So from this day forward, I'm going to treat everyone very, 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 very differently. And I'm going to be better. All I ask from my, my fans and supporters today uh, is to give me some sort of good energy or positive energy because I'm having a really fucking bad day and I'm, I'm very disappointed today. So what happened with me and, and 
Kowalski. Um, to explain it in an appropriate way and in a way that I can respect. Um, it was just, I guess, a, a lack of appreciation on his end, not because of me, I guess just from a business perspective, but he put a business perspective before a personal relationship. And I've been with, uh, been with him as a friend and as a brother for a very long time. So, I mean, it's just on some like other shit, to be honest. It's not even on some like, it's not even on anything I've, I've done wrong. I can't even, you can't even say I've done anything to him. People use you to get where they want to go and then part ways. And I've been used a lot. Now it seems like X didn't understand what Ski was doing and why he was separating himself. He even said that Ski was using him, which I think is completely not true as these guys knew each other from when they were kids. Anyways, Ski would come out and post his response to what X just said. I'm about to have to distance myself because it's like nobody would see me as an individual rapper if I don't. On top of that, that nigga crazy as hell. <laughs> now in this video, Ski said he wants to be his own artist. And if you weren't around during this period, you may be confused. Well, as the two were breaking into the mainstream, Ski was always behind X in the limelight. Many people just knew him as X's friend and never acknowledged him for his own music, which of course, from Ski's point of view, must have really hurt. He spent his entire life building a career in music just to become known as his friend's sidekick. He was so hurt by this that he had to separate himself from X and even remove the song Take A Step Back featuring X from his SoundCloud as it was his most popular song but it had an X feature and he didn't want people to think that it was only popular because of the feature. I mean, think about the Rob Stone beef. It was literally between Ski and Rob but then X got involved to defend Ski which ended up completely taking the limelight in the beef and turning it into his own feud. Ski was just constantly living in X's shadow. Imagine you're hanging with, with, with Eminem. Eminem is a bigger artist, they love him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're coming up, but they love him. You, you would probably know that you will never really flourish and probably max out your potential if you're always standing next to him. You, you'll always be the guy who's mentioned alongside him, right? Mm -hmm. Especially when you're starting now, you haven't established yourself as a solo act. Mm -hmm. Announcement. If you want me to make music, tell Ski Mask to be my friend again. Tell Ski Mask to be my friend again and I will make music. Tell him to be my friend again. As you can see, X was really hurt by this entire situation. You need friends to help ground you and keep your mind straight. I mean, for a while, nigga, it was, it was only me and my best friend. And nigga, that was Ski. And nigga, I don't have that. And nigga, I don't really have anybody around me I consider to ground me, to be honest. And it just seemed like he didn't understand why Ski was distancing himself. Well, Ski has already explained himself. He said that he wants to be seen as his own artist and didn't want to be seen as X's sidekick. But Ski would explain further on his story that X said to him that he wants to sacrifice him and that he even threatened his own family. Which of course is very wrong and disturbing. So now we can understand even further why Ski separated himself from X. Fellow Florida rapper and members only affiliate, Wi-Fi's funeral would speak out on the situation between Ski and X and give us an insider point of view. It's not that niggas is, niggas is not friends, bro. It's that we're not fucking like 17, 18 years old, bro. Everybody is a grown ass man and is doing and living their own fucking life. So just because niggas don't hang out with each other like that, or shit, fuck it, bruh. If niggas don't even fuck with each other like that the way how they used to, it's not on no beef and shit, it's just nigga like, everybody just got their own life to live. They now what I'm about to say might seem crazy to you, because around a month or two later, well Ski asked X for a feature for his upcoming project, which seems crazy after he went on this entire tangent on social media about wanting to separate himself from X. Well, X would publicly reject Ski on his story, saying, my response to the request for the song by Ski is no. I'm going to destroy all of these rappers. None of them are friends to me. They don't give a F about me. They just want my energy. Upside down smiley face. Keep my foot on their throat. F all of them. But X would change his mind and later on tweet, 
I'm gonna get on ski tape, but I'm doing this only because I want to see him succeed in his own light in hopes that it'll make him feel better. As you can see, their relationship was going for a bit of a rough patch right now. And it seemed like X was still confused and didn't understand what Ski was doing or why he was doing it. But in the January of 2018, he would come out and explain the situation between him and Ski and how now he somewhat understands why Ski had to do what he did. Niggas ain't gonna treat me and Ski like we Mario and Luigi. No, we both Mario. Mario got like four lives, right? He, we, we, we share a life. You know what I'm saying? If I die right now, or a bro die right now, I come. We share lives. It ain't no motherfucking sidekick. None of that. It's, bro, it's not no Goku and Vegeta. You know what I'm saying? No, bro. We both fucking Goku. X would then explain how the media and fans making Ski seem like X's sidekick messed up their relationship. And that was the fucking problem, bro. That's what fucked, bro. That fucked up my, re my relationship with my brother. Bro, that's my brother, bro. I ain't seen my brother in months, my nigga. I haven't seen my brother in almost a year, my nigga. Because people keep fucking with his pride and his ego. As a man, bro, don't no man want to be seen as no fucking bitch, bro. Why you think I, I, I talk about bro so much? Because I value the nigga, you know what I'm saying? And the shit fucked up his relate. Like, the media fucked up his relationship because they ain't give brother credit he deserved. So like, all right, when so I was kind locked of felt up, he had to go around to go get When I was it. saying he had to go around me to get where he needed to go. So they fucked up my relationship with my best, br best friend. That was my brother, my nigga. Now, I know I've put a lot of footage from this DJ Academics FaceTime in, but there's more because I think it's quite important because X speaks a lot about his co-op and his relationship with Ski in this. So he's going to keep going with it. X would then go on to explain how he respects what Ski did, but was upset with him that he didn't publicly explain that the sacrifice stuff wasn't serious, and he made a big deal out of nothing. Do you hold anything with that of how he did it against him? Yeah, but only but in a respect in a respectful manner. Like the only thing that wasn't cool to me is the nigga said I was gonna sacrifice him because I've talked to him since. And he admitted he was wrong and that he was bugging. That I'm like mad him. because he didn't go on the internet and say that he said he was bugging. But he came to me and he said, yo, I was wrong. I was bugging. But you're not sacrificing nobody. Just, just clear that up. No, bro. I sacrificed my fucking self. I went to jail for months and we blew, we all blew the fuck up. If I ain't go to jail for months, nigga, we would not have blown the fuck up. That is very true. It's a fucking fact paved in stone. I was the sacrifice, nigga. Niggas are just fucking ungrateful. I was the sacrifice. I went to jail and was a fucking sacrifice. That's why I'm not trying to go through certain shit no more. Because when I got out, everybody latched onto me like fucking vampires, sucked up my energy, and then left and didn't realize who the fuck they were sucking blood from. And I've been angry about this shit since. Because I lost friends, bro. I lost friends to this fame shit, bro. Yeah. I lost my fucking, bro. I lost my fucking brother and then even my family started acting different. And X was kind of right about people leeching off him. Of course, when you get big, people want you. But even partially with Ski, he said he wants to distance himself from X as he wants to be his own artist. But as soon as Ski wants to release his project, he's instantly messaging X and wants two features from him. Even though a couple months ago, he was saying he doesn't want to be associated with him. It seems weird. And X was right that Ski distanced himself in an odd way. Now, the last segment I'm going to put in from this DJ Academics FaceTime is that X says if he was in Ski's shoes, he wouldn't distance himself. He would take it on as friendly competition and try to overtake him instead of pussying out and trying to distance himself so people don't associate him with Ski if it was the opposite way around. And he kind of has a point because Ski basically ruined their friendship that they had for years just because X was taking the limelight off him. And it almost seemed like he was scared he would never be able to surpass him. Put yourself in their, their shoes. Yeah. Would you have done the same thing? Oh, hell you no. Going no, no, jail no, 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 no. You know what I would have did? It would have became friendly competition. It would have became a fucking battle. But it would be it would have been a battle right in front of each other. I would have looked my I would have looked my my contester in his eyes and been like, nigga, I'm gonna surpass you, nigga. I'm gonna do better than you, like the many fucking times I did, bro. But there's plenty of rappers that used to be bigger than me that I got in their face, rapped with them, outshined them, and became the beast I am. So after all this talk, where were they at musically wise? 
Well, the last time we would hear an official release from the two would be on Members Only Volume 3, released in the summer of 2017. Ski Mask didn't feature on X's 17 album or his Question Mark album, that released in the March of 2018. Now, after Ski was asking X for features, X rejected, then later accepted, which is what I was talking about just before these DJ Academics interviews. Well, Ski Mask would release a project in the May of 2018, and X would not be seen on the project. So to me, and many fans, it seemed like the two were no longer making music. Then the last time we would see the two in public would be at Rolling Loud in 2018, where they would perform for one last time, and even made up on stage, as X would tell Ski he loves him. Yo, what the dude I and guys, I'm watching this performance and it is absolutely iconic. Not only is it the last time performing that makes it go down in history, but also just watching them live, they're literally the perfect duo for these incredible concerts. But right before 20, uh, 21 Savage on the main stage, I'm performing today. So listen, listen, listen. The only way I'm fucking performing is if you turn up for me as GTA right now. But unfortunately, the truth would come out, and apparently, their interaction at Rolling Loud Miami wasn't all too real. That whole interaction was fake as fuck. Well, my part was real, but this is fake. So when X told Ski he loves him on stage, he meant it. But when Ski said it back, and some other stuff he said backstage, apparently, Ski's interaction seemed very fake to X. Well, Ski would also give his side of the story in an interview with Billboard, a year after X's passing where he said, he told me my vision was blurred. I don't remember exactly the word he used, but he basically said that my vision was blurred, that my decision making wasn't what it used to be. And I was basically like, I argued with him, but he was trying to tell me about myself and how I could do better for myself. And I wasn't trying to take it like that. I was taking it as, you're just trying to show me that you're better than me. I already know that you're better than me. That's how I felt at the time. It wasn't jealousy. It was just me wanting to be my own man seeing how much Jar say was his own man. So yeah, it's pretty clear, Ski just wanted to be seen as his own artist because he was afraid that he would always be in X's shadow. However, after X died, Ski realized that X was only speaking the truth as he would go on to say in the same interview that, I seen that my decision making was blurred. I thought what I was doing at the time was cool and was working, but then after he died, I seen what he was saying. I was like, bruh, I was going down a bad path. My career was going down a path that, if I didn't change it soon, it was gonna be seen in a certain way forever. I see that now. And that's what he was basically trying to tell me. Literally, he said, there's a cliff right there, and I'm telling you, there's a cliff. And you're still gonna keep walking towards the cliff while I'm telling you it's there. And what I said back to him was like, yeah, that cliff could be there, but there could be a strong tree branch hanging off that cliff that I could grab onto after I walk off that cliff, that I could always just back and forth, brotherly love. And from what we know, that was their last interaction before X died. And it just seemed like Ski was so caught up in not being in X's shadow that literally he couldn't see clearly and was making the wrong decisions. And since he couldn't think straight, well, that's what caused him and X to separate. So to round up the video, what state was their relationship before X passed? I think X really cared about Ski, but he was also a controlling person as he was very insecure at times and didn't want to be abandoned, which is why he pleaded his fans to go and tell Ski to go be his friend again, and that he's not releasing music until Ski is his friend again. X then also said, Ski was his only friend for a while, and now that Ski distanced himself, he has no one to ground him anymore. It's like X felt lost without Ski. But then from Ski's point of view, well, I think distancing himself was the wrong move. He didn't need to sabotage a relationship with his best friend just because he was afraid he would be living in his shadow. He should have seen it as competition. In the end, it seems like they didn't beef, but just had many disagreements about how they both treated each other, which I could further expand on and bring up the question, why was this handled publicly? It could be that X was desperate Maybe he already tried reaching out to Ski, but he may have not got a response, or Ski kept on declining to be friends with him. So we got his core fanbase to convince Ski. 
it may have been his final resort. Unfortunately, they didn't end on great terms, but to me, it still seems like, like they had much brotherly love for each other. Ski just thought that leaving X would be the best for his career. Ski wouldn't try to hide the fact that he wasn't on good terms with X at the time of his death. He would mention on Empty, on Members Only 4, I know they judge in my heart, can't even blame them at all. I know I fucked up and I'll apologise for my flaws. Lost on the train, made a fort. I hope my end is my start. I hope that jar see my heart.